Uh, my name is Josh Delitsky. I work at a company called ChainGuard. Um, come visit us in the booth area. We have socks and other things. Um, Sajay uh, could not make it here today, um, but we have a fantastic uh, video of him doing a fantastic demo, and I encourage you to watch it while it's happening, and it's going to be a great presentation. Um, so uh, we're going to talk today about um, OCI, uh, which is something that I have found myself entangled in in the last several years. Um, and we're going to talk about this. Um, how do you connect different things inside of a registry? So um, if you're if you're in this space or if you're in this talk right now in this room, you probably know that people have been putting things uh, into registries in uh, questionable ways. And um, that's an issue because uh, tooling doesn't know how to work with that. And so, um, so it's really a two-part really two uh, issue. One is what I just said. How do you get a list of these things that point to an image? Um, I'll say the word SBOM. Uh, SBOMs? SBOMs. Um, how do you find out, uh, basically, given an image, what are the SBOMs that point to it, signatures, or anything else, really? You, can, uh, you should be able to attach any type of metadata without modifying the digest of an image. Um, because that's what makes, uh, you know, container registries secure and lets you know that nothing has been tampered with. Um, so always use digests. So exactly, how are we going to get this list? And the second part of that question is, like, an implied, uh, it's, it's kind of implied of, like, you know, there, people are putting these things in here. But how do you actually do that? How are you supposed to do that in a way that um, has sort of been blessed by the Open Container Initiative um, and is like the recommended approach? Because there's been a few different ways, and some are trying to be uh, change the system, and some of them are trying to work with the existing system, and certain registries don't have all the features. Uh, and you'll, you know, you'll find flags on tools like Cosign that, you know, help you work around these issues. And it's not really, it's not, it's not a sustainable uh, thing. Um, so that's the problem, but it's a problem that has two parts. One is how do we actually do that? And then. I can't see. Uh, and then, but how do we actually do that with the community? And so, um, you know, for the people here who have worked in open source, you you know that there's a people. The the harder part is working with people. Um, anyone can write an amazing API and an amazing tool, but how do you get people to agree on it? Um, so, we broke it down this talk into two parts um, with the speakers. So I will be talking about number two because. To me, that's, that's actually the interesting thing here. Um, if you want to step out and get a coffee and come back in about 10 minutes, you can see the code. And that's when Sajay will uh, appear on the screen um, then. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of people uh, are acutely aware of issues in OCI. Um, but it really helps to paint a picture of why OCI is the way that it is. So um, there's context to which, or like there's things to which I do not have the context, but there's several people in the OCI community who have been around um, for several years from the beginning, really, and they still attend the calls. And every time you bring up, well, what, what's going on here? They kind of all just kind of, you know, just kind of like rub their heads. And uh, it comes down to the reason OCI exists 
is so people wouldn't sue each other. Um, it really is. I mean, like Docker was doing things, CoreOS was doing things, um, and something happened where someone needed some legal something, and so then the OCI existed, and we codified all the things that Docker did to make it an open standard, and so um, it wasn't just Docker that gets to, you know, write the rules for how containers work. So, um, yeah, so the, the tooling there at that time was Docker and Rocket, if you're familiar with, if you remember Rocket. Um, but yeah, 2015, and this predates my, really my involvement in any containering uh, open source. Uh, it was formed. 2018, um, the registry, like the Docker registry, if you, if you are familiar with that project, it's called Distribution. It's a CNCF project now. Um, that was then turned into a spec in 2018. Um, and that's a little bit after that is around the time that I got involved in this. So I kind of come into this and I'm really confused why it's very slow, but it really helps to understand that it, it was kind of a thing put down uh, like a stake in the ground, like, okay, we agree here, now don't do anything. Um, but I wanna do things. Uh, and also, you know, th this is a really like important piece of the Kubernetes puzzle. Um, it's kind of taken for granted that the way that a container is run or referenced and, and all these different things in Kubernetes, it just kind of works. And Amazon and Google and um, Microsoft and now GitHub and all these places have these registries and it just works. It's really... Uh, it's really actually one of the pieces in technology that it, it really is ubiquitous and, and works, works well. So kind of a lot of the, the reasons why people don't like to move things is because, like, why would you uh, break it or why would you fix it if it ain't broken? Um, and then also uh, there's competition. There's, there's quite a bit of... Um, and I don't think this is specific to OCI, but kinda, maybe. Um, you know, it's like, I didn't come up with the solution, so like, that's not, like, that's not really that, uh, that great. And actually look at this thing that I did and I have this blog post, you should read it. And that doesn't really help because, you know, we're trying to make changes that will, you know, help do these things and there's, you know, supply chain security now, and we, we really gotta, like, we, we really do have to do something. Um, and you don't, you don't want the OCI to go away because it, it does have a good core set of things. Uh, the other thing is that um, even if you don't codify it, things end up doing this anyway. Um, so, you know, uh, these, these three tools, Scopio, ORS, and Cosine, uh, in varying degrees and different ways, they have the ability to uh, kind of either publish non-container things to a registry or attach them together. Um, and then these things get used by ecosystem tools. So um, a great example is uh, Homebrew. They actually, like when you do brew install something from the official tap or... Uh, whatever it is called, it's actually going to GitHub's registry and downloading a faux image. So, like, this is already happening, and it's not, it's like kind of exploding, and we gotta kinda figure out what's, what's the proper way to do this. Uh, one note on Cosine, and I only bring it up because it was mentioned in the talk description, is that Cosine is like a fantastic tool and it has solved all these problems, but really, it's, it's doing a hack on the current OCI specs. Um, and of course, like if the image on the right is like from a GitHub registry page where you've pushed a bunch of signatures, you end up with these um, bizarrely named um, you know, tags. And it, tags were not really meant for this purpose, but it works, and it works well, but um, now when you list your tags, you have thousands of tags, and that's like, that's not, like, 
I'm not sure someone could look at that and say that that was the right approach to this. So, um, <laughs> the, there's, uh, if you want to go on GitHub and read the series of historical content of why this all happened, um, you can. I don't recommend it. But um, at some point in time, uh, there was conversations and discussions and suggestions. And the uh, TOB of OCI decided, let's do a working group to finally fix this because there's camps over here that want to do this way, camps that want to do this way. So um, with the help of Linux Foundation's legal team, they you know, put the right words into the charter, which remember was really created to prevent people from suing each other. So like we want to still prevent that. And so they helped um, you know, organize us to be able to do this. Um, and then, so that was, let me see, from May to August, this thing was open and people are asking, you know, should the wording be like this? And should the wording be like this? And it's still moving slow. And then finally in November, um, Steve, who's from Microsoft, um, suggests now that the thing has been merged to um, open up the working group. And that happened, that was in December. And then I started working at ChainGuard in January and working on this project. So um, from there, we opened up a doodle poll and said, what are the good times for everybody? We found out Tuesdays at 1 p.m. or something was the time. And then we ended up on a Zoom call and we were kind of like, what do I do here now? Um, and uh, Lachlan, who's from Microsoft, had a fantastic idea where on the call, we all sit down and we say, um, what do I think I'm here to do right now? And we wrote these down and we finally came to consensus on what we're here to do. And that was that first slide, which is propose how to describe and query relationships between objects stored in an OCI registry. Um, so, okay, so we have that and then now we have a lot of people with a lot of great ideas, um, a lot of people with fully complete ideas, some people with half-baked ideas. And you can't just get on Zoom calls and just talk, right, for one hour a week and expect for something to happen. Um, so I had this idea, um, and the group was pretty enthusiastically supportive of this, which was create a markdown um, template for how I will propose how to do this. And you must, like, I'm, you're gonna submit a proposal and I'm not even gonna like review like the contents, I'm just gonna make sure that it, it meets this template so that when I'm visually looking between the different, um, the different proposals, I know like how to get the context for how they differ in these different, in these different ways. So short description, uh, long description, links to existing blogs or anything that talks about this. And then at the bottom there, you can kind of see this is what changes in the JSON and this is what changes in the HTTP API. So uh, that worked out pretty well. And within a few weeks, we had, um, we had four proposals on the table. Um, and they were all kind of similar with the exception of D, which was like, let's just do cosine. And people, like, obviously that was, it wasn't like a, you know, it was a legitimate proposal, but obviously we formed the working group, so that's not what we're going to do. Um, but Cosign did do things in an interesting way, and, um, you know, it, it's working, so maybe don't try to break it. But again, there's a reason we're here. Uh, after that, we were kind of like, you know, there are parts of all of these that we like. Um, and they're actually pretty similar, so let's combine them. Um, and a big shout out to Brandon uh, Mitchell, who um, first of all, just did a lot in this group, but um, put together this, which was a combination of all of them, kind of took the best of it. And, we were, and then we were ready to go, and it was, 
we were celebrating, we were popping champagne. Um, actually, not yet, but um, so we, we decided we we're going to do E, and then all of a sudden, um, kind of out of the woods comes proposal F, which is uh, sort of <laughs> like also don't do anything, but like abuse OCI in a different way. And uh, there was value to that, and it had support from uh, uh, the, the Docker team. Um, and so we were kind of like in this, like kind of, we were kind of like, we thought we had it down and then it got to this one and we're all kind of looking around the room like, oh, come on, now we're here again. So we came up with this idea where you will vote on, um, we're just gonna say, okay, E or F, all right? And we'll just do democracy. And, you know, people thought uh, that would, uh, you know, be abused and I make a bot and I'd vote for it. Like, it just never happened. Like, people were pretty cooperative with this. Um, and so we open up an issue and say, hey, put a thumbs up on this one if you want E, thumbs up on this one for F. And E ended up having majority of support. So finally we got to that point and um, from there, this is, you know, it was kind of like, all right, we have the proposal, but how do we get this in a form that we can give it to OCI? Um, one of the other things that we did is we created an organization um, called OCI Playground. Um, I, no one has sued us for this yet, but uh, basically we gave admin to anyone who was involved in the working group, and we just like, over the course of like two months, staged these PRs um, and did PRs in the fork to come up with what we would finally submit um, to the OCI like main branch. Um, and uh, those were opened on August 9th. And I will cliffhang it and you will wonder if that worked out or not. And now, Sajay. Hello, everyone. I am Sajay Anthony, an engineering manager on the Azure Container Registry team and an OCI image spec maintainer. Hold on, I wanna, I wanna do him justice, so let me figure out how to full screen. First of all, thank you to the community for making this happen. As Josh mentioned, the working group was tasked with finding a way in which we could store things related to image, image like an S-bomb or a signature, and also defining a way in which we could consistently access these from different clients and services. We had gathered a lot of feedback and uh, it was the collaboration from the different community members that made this possible. Before I jump into the specification details, I would like to thank Brandon Mitchell who had created the initial set of diagrams um, that were used during the calls to kind of like even talk through them. And I'm basing my content off that. And now let's jump into the specification details. Let's start with a tag. Um, a tag or a reference to an image typically points to an image manifest or an image index. The index is a collection of manifests of different platforms. Um, and um, whereas the image manifest itself is a definition of what an image is. It encapsulates things like layers and the config of that image. We needed a way in which we could define another type that would um, that would be used to store things like an SPOM or a signature related to an image, but not an image. And for that, we ended up um, specifying the artifact manifest. In the artifact manifest, there's a field called a subject that points to that specific image, if you want to think about it. And that is what we refer to as a subject, which is the descriptor of the image to which it is related. There's an artifact type in that, and that field can be used by clients to kind of infer the contents of that artifact, which might be stored in its blobs collection uh, and stored similar to like layers. Um, one more point I would like to mention is that the image also has a notion of a subject field now as part of the changes that enable a very similar um, way of storing these relations. And I'll talk to uh, more about that in the fallback part of uh, the specification. 
So now let's see this in action. First of all, we need to run a registry that is capable of understanding these new types and these new APIs. So in OCI Playground, we have an image that can be used um, to start playing with this. So I'll run this image. on port 5000 and this image can be accessed from GHCR in the OCI playground repo called registry. All right, let's copy an OCI image into this registry. I'm using a client called Auras to do that. I have a test image here and I copy it into our running registry with the following name. All right, this image now, as you can see, has this digest, which starts with 34B7. And to this image, now I wanna attach an artifact. You can use the OCI manifest on the registry APIs directly, but to show that, I'm just using the client called Auras that would use uh, to create this new artifact manifest and attach uh, a cat picture to this one for now. So I use the attach command, specify that I want to attach it to this image, specify the artifact type and the file that I want here and its type. As you can see, to this tag, we have now attached this manifest. Let's take a look at what this manifest is. I access this repository and say that I want to access this manifest of this specific digest. And we see that this is an OCI manifest an artifact manifest, and it has the blobs that we defined and the subject of that specific 34B7 uh, hello world tag that we had used. So let's recap. We have an image, the artifact associated with the image, and we create a link using the OCI artifact manifest and we attach them using the subject property. We could go ahead and attach more and more of these to that specific image. But now the next interesting question is, how do we actually access these um, things that are attached to that, that digest? So for that, the distribution spec has uh, a new API called the referrers API. You can think of it as uh, an API in which you can query for relationships to that specific digest. So you can ask it, give me all the referrers for um, the, uh, for the image hello or latest using its digest um, against this API. And the API would give you a response of, these are all the manifests that have been linked to that specific digest um, manifest. Uh, you can see that it follows the specification of the image index. And this is uh, important because as you would see in the fallback, um, the same similar specification uh, or the index objects is used to link the objects as well. And if you pay attention to it, it stores an image manifest and an artifact manifest. Um, and the response would actually enable us to link different types of artifacts together. So let's see the API in action now. All right, so I have the subject here, which is my hello world latest image. And what I wanna do is go ahead and query the registry. And I access the V2 API, uh, which is the base of the registry and specify the repository. And I say refers for that specific digest. Let's format that. And you can see that I get an image index with the manifest of the OCI artifact. And it has an artifact type 
uh, that was specified here. Now let's go ahead and attach another artifact to that. Same image. A different artifact type this time. And let's go ahead and attach it to another text file to that. So now you have another manifest that was created. If I go ahead and query the referrers API this time, I see that there are two manifests. And so as you keep attaching more and more content, this API will return you all the linked artifacts to that Hello World uh, latest manifest. Now, for making sure that you don't get everything, the specification also supports introducing uh, a filtering of that specific artifact type. So you can ask it, show me only the signatures or show me only the artifacts that are of this specific type. And pagination uh, is by a standard link header as well. All right, so now let's get to how do you use this today? As you probably know, there aren't uh, registries out there that kind of support this, but you. But our hope is that we will see more and more of them uh, come out in the near future. But to be able to uh, use a part of the specification as it is today, we have the fallback uh, defined as well. A uh, couple of things that we want to keep in mind is um, the fallback has to use an image manifest for achieving similar results. And as I spoke before, the referrals response is a dynamically generated index and instead we depend on a, a statically client created index for this. Let's see that in action now. So for that, uh, let's run a registry. on the same port. And at this time, I'm going to use one that does not have uh, the OCI artifacts support. And I can use the registry image from a Docker Hub because it's a standard distribution image. All right. Let's go ahead and copy an OCI image as we did before. Keep in mind that this registry does not have support for the new OCI artifact manifest or the referrers manifest. The fallback specification describes how we can use an image manifest to construct an artifact and push that to the registry. And it also talks about how you can use a digest tag that would describe a response very similar to the referrers API. Now for this, I'm going to be using a client called redctl that has support uh, for this fallback part of the specification. So for the uh, what I can do is I can now push an artifact that has the subject, which is the image that we just copied. And the artifact type is as we did before. And here, let's go ahead and attach the cat picture. Now let's look at how the tags of this repository have changed. You can see that there are two tags, the latest and a digest tag. And if you look at the digest tag, it's pretty much the digest of the image that we had copied. So let's now go ahead and view the manifest uh, that is described by this digest tag. You can see that this digest tag stores an image index, which is very similar to how the referrers API stores it. And it has a manifest, which we have just created, 
and it is an image manifest instead of an OCI artifact manifest. And let's go ahead and see the contents of what this artifact is here. As you can see, this is an image manifest. It has a config media type that maps to the artifact type that we specified. It's got the layers of the cat picture and the subject is the subject of the image that we had initially copied. So you can see that even though the registry does not have the support for the referrers API, you can use a digest tag to formulate a manifest and um, it should be very similar to how the referrers API should function. And this can be done all on the client side today. Just to uh, see how this changes when you attach another manifest, let's do that. Let's use the same subject. A new artifact type. And this time I'm going to attach the text file we attached similarly. And if we were to look at the tags, we see that we still only have the single digest tag. So each time an artifact is attached, it doesn't change the digest tag because the image manifest digest is the same. What we can do is look at the manifest that now what this digest tag uh, points to. And now we can see that there are two manifests in this digest tag. So very similar to how the referrers would actually return all the attached manifests, we can clearly see that the clients can formulate a very similar index and push them today. I, I think the community would benefit from others looking at the specification, giving us feedback. Um, we're very grateful for uh, all the uh, contributors to making this happen and with more feedback, I hope that we can make this even better. Um, I also hope that we see operators rolling this out so that uh, the manifest API and the referrers API can be used to attach more things and achieve more things uh, in the supply chain security world as well. Um, and it helps the community adopt the registry as a standard model of storage as well. And with that, um, I, want, I want to thank everybody for the contributions that you've made and hope we see this improve over time. Um, I would like to hand it back to you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you, Sajay. So uh, we left with the cliffhanger of, you know, we put months and months and months of effort into this uh, but there was, never, there was never kind of a guarantee that OCI was going to accept it. And I'm happy to announce today that we did it. So uh, our changes were merged. Yes. Let's hear it for OCI. Um, yeah, so uh, our changes were accepted. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically all we have left to do is Cut the 1.1 release. Uh, we're kind of working out a few, you know, uh, we, we're changing words here and there. Um, we want to get conformance tests to be, you know, to let you know which registries support this new stuff. Um, we want other CNCF projects. So if you're a maintainer on one of these projects, um, please, please uh, talk with OCI. We somehow have our own Slack. Um, and uh, we'd love to help you onboard with that. And also, just uh, this was kind of, uh, it felt monumental to us, uh, even though we added just one API endpoint. Uh, <laughs> so thank you to everyone. I know there's several of you in the room today. And just, you know, it, it really means a lot to see this, this kind of all come together after many, many, uh, actually several years of, you know, kind of 
arguing online about this. And thank you for being here today. And uh, this link here is the demo that Sajay gave. Um, we made it, you know, you can just run those forks of Oris and uh, RegCTL in a container, and you can try out the exact, uh, exact thing of the demo. So, um, and with that, I strategically left no time for questions, and um, thank you. <laughs>